Hey guys, it's Seth and Cody from The Ride Home and The SoCo Show. Uh, we took a long time off. It's been a couple months since we've posted one of these, but we're back now and we're hoping to get them up more regularly. So make sure you're subscribed to the Jared Buckendall channel so you can see all the new episodes. And you can also check out episodes of The SoCo Show on Jared's channel as well. Check them out on Google Play, Apple Music, and SoundCloud as well. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel there and catch new episodes. Yep. Links to all that stuff down below. We'll get you into the episode. Hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Skirt. <laughs> Ran a red light. That's how excited I am. <laughs> I've never done that before. <laughs> about you man you know that feeling after like you eat like a really good meal like on thanksgiving and you're just satisfied that's me right now i'm just like very happy and satisfied it's not like when you leave a movie and you're like oh let's go ah, like mission <laughs> impossible or whatever it's, i'm just like yeah that was effing yeah. tight <laughs> i loved that i loved that what did you think did you like it yeah definitely great i enjoyed it quite a bit um, no, it, it was definitely everything I hoped it was, was going to be. Yeah. I, 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 I want to like slow my roll cause I really want to start just like saying how great it is compared to all the other Marvel movies and that whole thing. I don't want to get into that cause it's recency bias and whatever, but <laughs> I think when that conversation does come up, this will be a, a high one. Uh, I loved it. I thought it was so dope. Mm. So thinking about like, so I don't know, but thinking of like pros and there's it's basically most of the movie is pros mm -hmm. um i thought that first of all the villain killmonger oh yeah was really cool mm -hmm. um everyone always complains about the marvel villains and how they lack depth and their motivation's really weird and all they are is an antithesis of the villain or whatever and there's some of that i mean he's very directly a, a reverse copy of, of yeah. t'challa but i thought that he had a really cool depth here with the whole theme of, you know, him being abandoned, and also his his whole thing is like, all black people around the world should band together, mm -hmm. right? And and Wakanda is not doing what they should um, by kind of leaving everyone else behind. He feels left behind. And right. I thought that was really interesting, and it I really grabbed onto that. I was like, wow, like he's actually got a point. Mm -hmm. You know, he you could empathize with him even though he was the bad guy, and that's something you never get in these Marvel movies. So I really dug him. Right. No, Michael B. Jordan definitely did a, a great job in that role. Um, he's fucking Jack too. He's ready for Creed too. When he when he went to fight and like Chala takes his shirt off, and you're like, all right, T'Challa, what's up? And then he takes his shirt <laughs> off. And you're like, whoa! Yeah, well, Michael B. Jordan wins that one. <laughs> and he also had those dots all over him. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah. Um, he was just a really interesting character. I'm kind of bummed he's dead. Like I wanted to see more. But. Yeah. No, he's yeah he's he's got I mean he's definitely got a point to to being there um and and it made it made T'Challa rethink his ways mm -hmm. of of leading um and, and and just in terms of how Wakanda was going to work as a nation which is you I mean you don't get that a ton with with the superhero movies anyway you see it in some other movies mm -hmm. but superhero movies you, you know most of the time they just go for pure evil yep. and you don't really see kind of what what drives them and in, in, in that kind of depth and you don't get to see you know kind of the the positive side of mm -hmm. some of those characters so um, you, there's points where you feel bad for Lee Jordan's character but there's also points where like oh he's definitely pure evil he was pretty nasty but he had a point here around this right fucking ran a red light that's how excited I am <laughs> I've never done that before <laughs> I I didn't know. I couldn't tell with your speed. I love how you're just like, you're gonna run away. <laughs> could have easily gotten hit. I could have got. We could have gotten hit or a ticket. Yeah. It well, looks like we're good. Ticket doesn't affect me any. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, but that's how good. That's how good Killmonger and Michael B. Jordan were yeah, in this. That you're uh, that I was risk our lives. I for... was willing to risk it all to continue to talk about it. 
All right, um, let's go home before we die. Yeah, what else was really good? I thought that the combat in this was good. Yeah, fighting. The fighting was really tight. I liked the choreography. It was kind of a, it was a different style of fighting. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like uh, Captain America's really like heavy punch, heavy punch, yeah. heavy punch, kick him. And this was a lot more swift and, and cool. Yeah. Um, I think it did fall into the Marvel trap a little bit of mm -hmm. overcutting it. Yeah. There were a couple scenes where it did that, but in general, I thought this was better than most movies. Right. And they had the really sick scene where the head general uh, warrior woman was fighting in the casino. Mm -hmm. She took on a few guys with her battle stick. Yeah. And uh, there was a really long one-on shot that was uh, really tight. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, anytime there was kind of anyone fighting outside of like the suit so mm -hmm. anytime it was you know hand to hand or weapon weapon to weapon combat um definitely was effective and it was you know they, they did a better job of not cutting so quickly mm -hmm. um and i still thought that the suits were cool you know the, the action in it was cool and it wasn't it wasn't as bad as some of the other like when you get like an iron man fight mm -hmm. um, but no the, the fighting was definitely very cool uh, just the facts in general. The movie was gorgeous. Um, Very pretty. Yeah, Wakanda was great. Just the, the look of it. Um, you know, of course, the suits. There, I mean, there's a few moments of the CGI where it's kind of like, eh. You know, they, they could have done it better. But mm -hmm. um, One thing I also thought of that is kind of just a, <laughs> kind of a little plot pointy, uh, or just like poke holy, uh, is... Uh, poke holy. <laughs> uh, is... So Wakanda, like they fly into it, right? And it's mm -hmm. like it's just like a it's like a it's like a hologram visual, like it's a you know just fake visual thing, right? Um, so th that's been around for thousands of years. You th think at some point Someone someone's would. gonna either fly into it or just stumble upon it, yeah? You know, something like that. <laughs> so like Wonder Woman. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But like, at least that's in the middle of like the ocean. Yeah. Like this is this is in, is it Africa or South America? Because like, Africa. Because they mention at some point. Yeah, Claw says that the city of El Dorado, the famed city of mm. gold and whatever. Okay. Everyone thinks it's in South America, but it's right. really Wakanda. Okay, that makes sense. But yeah, I think they just murdered everyone that did, that stumbled in there. <laughs> I think that's where Amelia Earhart is. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia Earhart is in Wakanda, kicking yeah. out a chapel pose. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Wearing some rings around her neck. <laughs> yeah, she has one of those. Do, do you also notice? Oh, the lip guy. <laughs> but not just the lip guy. The lip guy dresses the f***ing Riddler. He had his the, green suit. He had a yeah. green suit on, and he's just like. That was dope. Yeah, that was interesting. No. Um, yes, yeah, so the effects were pretty sweet. I, the on lines of the effects, the technology with it that they used in the effects was pretty cool. Um, the coolest thing I thought was the the taking over cars when you're not there mm. and, the, and the planes that was really neat they shot that really cool too the mechanics yeah. of it and how yeah. they would snap back and forth was really dope yeah um and then yeah the, the music as well just the the way that they would kind of use the music to define some of the characters like michael b jordan um when he took over as king they played like the heavy beat mm -hmm. rap but then also when when T'Challa was the king. They kind of had the the classic African music that was more joyous and tribal and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I thought that was really cool. Um, I don't I don't normally notice the score of these on the first try, mm -hmm. but this I definitely like. I was jamming out to some yeah. of the songs. I also I also like too in that final battle. There was that point where there was no music for a little mm -hmm. bit. That was pretty neat. So yeah, there just the there wasn't much you could you know really poke a hole in this movie. No. Um, I mean it's definitely your stereotypical cookie cutter superhero movie yeah um but it threw in you know it threw in some social issues it threw in some, you know the family background things like that so and i think that's a testament to ryan coogler and and you know he wrote and directed this that's uh -huh. that's his his style he you know he throws in stuff like that uh -huh. you get made, the feeling with with this and the Thor movie that just came out, that they're kind of letting a little more slack out mm -hmm. for the directors, because this definitely felt like it was his. Mm -hmm. It didn't look like all the other Marvel movies that were always watching about how they all look <laughs> the same. Right. This didn't. It looked very much different. Yeah. Even though, like you said, it's kind of that cookie cutter story, mm -hmm. but they did enough different with it that it was right. Yeah, and then and just overall the performances were, were good. I mean, they they got what you expected out of them, but the, they were really solid. I mean, the, I thought the women in this movie oh, um, man. did a great job. Denai Guerrero from from uh, Walking Dead plays Michonne. 
definitely showed her talents, which I know she has training with the, the swords and things like that, so uh, she she definitely showed that off in this movie. Mm-hmm. So uh, There's a lot of bad chicks in this. Yeah. Like the head general, the head science engineer mm-hmm. uh, that was his sister, she was very funny, Yeah, I thought. And I, I think um, the humor in this, I thought, was just right. Yeah. A lot of times they overdo it and, mm-hmm. you know, poop jokes and stuff. <laughs> yeah. This was just enough and it was done just right that I didn't feel like it was too much. Mm-hmm. And she was a big part of that. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's missing a couple poop jokes. Yeah. <laughs> That's the story they're of my re- life. They're regal, man. They're like, they are sophisticated. Yeah. They don't regal, talk about their poos. <laughs> regal people, they, have, they, they sit on Golden Thrones, man. <laughs> Jesus. I didn't think, so in terms of like, like you said, poking holes, mm-hmm. I mean, kind of cookie cutter. Mm-hmm what you'd expect from an origin movie. A few CGI. A little bit of CGI rubber men uh, uh, overcutting, but really, I mean, that's yeah. all. I can't think of any. Ulysses Claw was a little bit of a Claw throwaway. was a downer for me. Yeah. He was just, he was kind of over the top, mm-hmm. you know, and like he's singing the, what's he singing? What is love? Yeah. And, and his interrogation is just like, that's weird. Yeah. Like, it was just a little bit too, like, uh, yeah, I, I, I thought they could have used more, more of him. To be honest, I think I think they kind of just threw, had him as a throwaway character, yeah. and, which he means a lot more in the in the Marvel, mm-hmm. you know, side of things in the comics and everything. But he served a good purpose. Mm-hmm. But I just I wish that they had they could have kept him. Yeah, because I think he's a, he's an interesting character, and Andy any more of Andy Circus. Yeah, you just give me more of it. Andy Circus on my screen, please. <laughs> Whether it's a no arm guy or a badass ape, <laughs> or a, a completely underutilized villain. <laughs> Wait, that two two Disney that Disney does it twice. Disney hates Andy Serkis. They do. They just love smoking him. And now and then they they're gonna be buying Fox. So there's another one that they own apes. They're gonna you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna bring Caesar back to life and then like make him work at McDonald's. <laughs> Just waste Andy Serkis. Yeah. I, I'm really excited for what, um, for this as a lead-in to Infinity War, mm-hmm. because I think that they really kind of, they really nailed it in terms of, you know, you get the post credit scenes that get you jazzed up for Infinity War, mm-hmm. but... I was really worried that this whole movie would be like, here it comes, guys, it's yeah. set up. Right. And it wasn't that. It very much stood on its own. Like, you could you could not, you could never have watched a Marvel movie and still really dug this. Mm-hmm. And I, I really give him credit for that, for making it standalone. So this came in, what, 97, 98, 98 on Rotten Tomatoes now. 98 degrees. Obviously, there was a lot of hype around this. Did it, did it live up to all that hype for you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely yeah. lived up to that. Um, again, didn't break the mold, didn't do anything completely new, but, you know, it still felt, felt fresh, certified fresh, <laughs> um, with, uh, without, without having to do that, you know, whether it be the music, the fighting, the, the technology, the effects, it, you know, it, it did enough to make it feel fresh without, without having to completely reinvent the genre. Mm-hmm. It hit a lot of the beats that you would expect, um, but it hit them better, mm-hmm. is what I would say. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I I would totally agree. I've been excited about this for a long time, mm-hmm. and uh, man, it totally totally lived up to the hype for me. It was oh, yeah. so so much fun. I loved it. Especially in with with knowing the hype going in, you know, it definitely. I, I was enthralled the entire time. I was I. I was never bored. And it was yeah. two hours and a half almost. Never bored, and I never never uh, felt like I was gonna fall asleep. So. Nope. Which I do often. <laughs> and like you know how we, we'd always talked about like you know, how important the movie is. And like, I saw a ton of little black kids in there. And I love that. Like there was some afterwards with the one kid with his mom taking a picture by like the cardboard thing. And that made me so happy. Yeah. You have to send me that picture later. (laughs) Shut up. 